Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat. One episode, 131. One, I thought Kyle was drinking a beer for a second there. It is coffee. <laughs> In an awesome the Coffee mug. shine. Coffee shine. From, um, from Russia. <laughs> from Russia. Probably got lead in it. With love, probably has lead in it and uranium and a bit of Chernobyl. Um, folks. Chernobyl's in Ukraine. I know, but it's still well, owned by Russia. Might be might be Russia in a little bit. Who knows? Yeah, and it, the cloud blew. So, <laughs> Mr. Factual. Um, <laughs> Craig Mason over here. I was going to say, get Craig Mason on the line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, get him. Uh, ask him about the Borderlands. Not movie. the writer of Eli Roth's <laughs> Borderlands movie. Yeah. Um, folks, we're here to talk about video games. <clears throat> it is eight sixteen in the morning. Um, tragically, <clears throat> it is Four, my HVAC seven, has still not been fixed. Central. Oh, seven six. I forgot oh, your gross. I'm and dedicated life. to this bit. <laughs> um, did, uh, filter on. Um, discord is messing up so i'm just going to turn it off so you're getting raw will today everybody um he's coming raw in will. yeah it broke so i'm going in raw um <laughs> it's too early for anything um i have the boys here jake terry on kyle bailey ian fortunately couldn't be here so you know just perfect perfect he's timing seen. So we could he be said here. he was going to have, what did he say, a complicated morning? And a complicated like, hey. morning, which means he yeah. had too much to eat last night, and he's got a shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He just knows it's coming. Uh, it's going to blow blow the socks off of everything. Um, <clears throat> I do, um, different from last week, I do have an, another microphone set up. Uh, I've, used, I've used and abused Amazon's purchase and refund feature to test both the Elgato XLR and the SSL2. Um, I'm using the SSL2 currently, and I like it a lot more because it's it's not like touch buttons. It's all physical. It The volume knob goes up to 11, which is very cool. And it lets me output the headphones and speakers separately, guys. Can you believe that? Hmm. Can you believe a thing that lets you do That's that? Cool. That's so, cool. So uh, I just want to give everyone an update on that. Because I know everyone's <laughs> champing at the bit for that, uh, that hot, hot audio. So let me know if it sounds terrible, I, and I'll, I'll return this one. I actually haven't been on local chat because you refuse to talk about that. So that's the only reason I'm here. Yeah, it's true. I refuse to talk <laughs> about you and local chat. And uh, so yeah. we're just going to be addressing J Jake for the rest of the stream. <laughs> Hello. Jake's been on for way too long, and I keep trying to get Kyle on and other people, and everyone's always busy. And then I'm like... Oh, not in a bad way, but uh, then Jake's like, I'm available. I'm like, sure. <laughs> like, that's great. It's like a whole new show now. <laughs> There's no that's how I get involved off. in most people's lives. <laughs> like, I'm available in there. I'm available. Okay. Yeah, just, well, I guess whatever. Sure. 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 Um, no, it worked out, because uh, every single time you have said yes, then the episodes got screwed up, and I feel bad doing that to people. So it's like, uh, <laughs> Jake's part of Subpixel, so I can abuse him a little bit more than a, a random guest. <laughs> so we can do all this weird stuff. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Video games, folks. Video games. Now um, more than ever. Ian has been crossed off on this list, which is fantastic. Um, Kyle, <laughs> you start us off. You're punched in. You got in crisp 35. <laughs> Please tell us about the yeah. games you've been playing. <laughs> Chris, Chris, 35 times whatever the multiplier factor is for this camera I'm using. Um, so I thought that I hadn't played shit, but it turns out I have played shit. So um, I had not tested out my new PC setup, which is basically just a, I got a new CPU a while ago, and I never tested tested it, as one should. So instead of running Crisis, I ran... The modern day crisis which is cyberpunk 2077 and it ran great it was good it was smooth it was better than my experience when i played it two years ago on my not 13700 cpu um <laughs> that's about all i can say about that game it's still a janky mess the the driving doesn't feel good mm -mm. still and people 
there are more people on the streets now, uh, but they all are dumb and don't well, do anything. Well, that's Ronald Reagan's fault. Well, I mean, you know, I did see some signs and there were picket lines and stuff, so maybe there'll be some sort of political shift in that game uh, with the new update with Idris Elba being the president. Um, he's not actually. I just like that he's in that game. Oh. Anyway, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is still uh, a hot but yet very pretty mess. And then I played some Hard Space Shift. Shipped. I I almost I put Shipbreaker because it was funny to type it out, and then now I can't say Shipbreaker. There we go. And uh, that was fun because I had only played a hot little bit of it for our game of the year discussion, and I wanted mm-hmm. to play more. And I like it. It's good. Uh, I like the soundtrack a lot. Mm. It's 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 very juicy. I like it, but not like in your face. Um, yeah, and it's just it's fun. Kind of like okay, well, I'm gonna go do these two or three missions and uh, missions like these. I'm gonna go you know break down these two Work or three shift. ships and then uh, yeah, and then advance the story a little bit more. So I'm interested to get to the point where the story starts taking more of a like hey stuff's starting to happen and like you mm-hmm. can see like I'm what's I'm what's the last there. beat that happened oh buddy i <laughs> it it is it is the uh, engine exploded yeah something something <laughs> happened it was it was early on it's been a minute since i played it but has uh, the I, um, it was the last game that i played so has the has like the union buster showed up Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm there, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm waiting for all the other shipbreakers to strike mm-hmm. or whatever, and then the game is just you on a, a space picket line. You know, going, <laughs> yeah, going going around the space station for hours and hours. Make your sign and float they, around the space they, station. <laughs> they, they cut down. Well, it wouldn't be trees. They cut down the solar panels that are providing like. Uh, shade for you guys, so you mm-hmm. have to do it literally in the. They boiling. remove all the radiation protection from your suit. <laughs> yeah, that you have to pay for in the first place. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd be great. Don't so, yeah, don't that's, break that's your employees. It's been don't it's been a break. good time. Yeah, don't don't break. Uh, your trying employees. to get a good. So I don't okay. know. Mm-hmm. Oh, go go for it. No, I was going to say I don't know what it is about that title, but there was definitely a time maybe like two or three months after it came out that I couldn't remember it. And I was Googling like <laughs> ship space, hard breaker. I'm like, what, what is the order of the words that I'm supposed to type here? <laughs> and then I figured it out. Yeah, it is. I, it is. Um, it's not, it is an title. interesting title. Yeah. It, it's, I, I, I wish it was more just like ship breaker would be cool, mm-hmm. but it just sounds like ship breaker, which is also kind of cool. If it depends on what you're going for. Hard space is cool, but it it sounds like um I don't know. Hard space shipbreaker sounds like a board game more than a video game. It sounds like a like this a eighties villain game. or like yeah company. Yes. Yeah, like hard yeah. space doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like yeah, it's not it's like deep space. space is hard. I mean, it's like <laughs> yeah, you can't breathe there. It's um, not even that far in space. You're like in orbit. Yeah, so. it's a bunch of babies. It's like, it's, I guess game. it's like you could call it like dangerous conditions, shipbreaker. There you go. Yeah, or even like thirty thousand or sixty thousand feet shipbreaker. Oh, it's way further yeah, than that. Though. I know. I listen. 80, 80, I committed 80, to a 000, number. <laughs> eighty thousand leagues. Space station's ninety kilometers, right? Hey, I thought it was low Earth orbit. Hello. I think is anything below two hundred. So Amazon package is here. It, it is here. Uh, I will be right back. Bye, okay. right, Thomas. Right you. back. Oh God, <laughs> Ian's here in spirit. Um, don't forget to adjust the VCR tracking for the clearest picture. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say I need to give Hard Space Ship Breaker a second chance, but I feel like. By the time I go to play it again, there'll probably be a second one out, maybe? I so. don't think so. Because they've been talking about... Everybody Everybody was clamoring for multiplayer, and they were like, we just we want to polish the single-player experience first. So I feel like before they launched a second one, unless the second one was going to launch with multiplayer day one... Because um, Blackbirds, they're still busy. Most of them are busy with... Uh, Homeworld 3, right? 
Oh, yeah, you might be right. Like, I, I was think just Hardspace thinking in terms was a of a pretty like, small dev team. Um, yeah, I was just thinking in terms of like by the time. Yeah, I, I feel like there would be some sort of like collectors. I don't know. I, I always assume most games today that do fairly well get like the like nicer treatment or at least like a the sequel or edition. Something. Yeah. Because I, I really did like it and I tried. I listened to uh, a really annoying video game commenter that I listened to, Ian Gibson, uh, <laughs> who said I should play it without the timers and all that. And that was you a should. terrible idea. Or no, uh, sorry, you should play it with the timers. Yeah, yeah, because the timers pace the story out and um, all that sort of stuff where without the timers, you're just taking ships apart and six hours go by. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, Ooh. And, uh, oh, Kyle's back. Oh, and fast forwarded really quickly. Beautiful. Wow. He's so far away now. I gotta adjust him in here now. Oh, I just I just fully changed the camera. I forgot I'm not in <laughs> studio mode, so it was just full screen Jake for a second. Yes. <laughs> I hope everyone enjoyed that. <laughs> Me and my the the way my house is oriented, the sunlight just blasts through this sliding door in the mornings. Yeah, that's that's nice. I wish there was a window in this room, so um, I it wasn't the hot box that it is. Um, the night. I mean, it's it good. Is. I I have been able to essentially just use it for natural light when I'm recording on the uh, C100. I don't have any sort of lighting setup in here, but I feel like I've been pretty happy with all the lighting conditions in like the play this videos and my other impressions videos because it Guys, just have a big uh, sliding door uh, i think this was perfect this it's is good it. this is modern technology at its finest got a little tiny pancake lens on a very expensive entry-level cinema camera delivered by amazon for a worker who is underpaid from from a worker who was underpaid at 8 26 in the morning it's the american ideal it's beautiful it is beautiful. God bless America and Amazon and coffee. Um, yes. I bought, um, not to derail this from video games, I did buy, I bought a freaking nice uh, macro lens for my Minolta uh, film camera. Your old old camera. Yeah, yeah. my old boy. Um, S SRT 101? 102? Something like that. Um, and I haven't been able to use it yet, but I'm very excited to. I just went around the house with it and like zoomed into things and I was like, I can see it so clearly. <laughs> and then I was like, I can't take a picture because it'll be the shakiest thing ever. So I need to get the tripod out. But you just reminded me I bought that for like 50 bucks with like the extender nice. and everything. And it's like, oh, I love old cameras because everything's relatively cheap for the crappy stuff, the crappy good stuff. Um, mm. Yeah, um, video games I have played this week, um, King's Way, King's Way. I uh, really want to play King's Way, I have for years. Um, yes, King's so have I, Sway. Jake. King's Way, King's Way is a roguelike, light, um, desktop UI video game where you are a um adventurer who are logging into the computer and all the windows and everything in the computer's os are like your map screen your status screen your 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 bag um your skills the music um all that sort of stuff are little windows uh it's it essentially almost looks like this local chat overlay it's absolutely gorgeous and well presented um when enemies fight you their little like battle screen moves around the the desktop so you have to like follow it and like if something shoots darts at you little windows of darts come across and you have to click avoid on them so you don't get hit by them um you have different attacks uh i mean it's an rpg in that sense too so like you, you're you're leveling up your skills um there's a little bit of like oh i should get this keen first because every level it gives me more um it gives me an extra skill level point so i'll take that first um, so I played as an adventurer the first time, which is like the all-around handyman. I mostly went towards strength build. Uh, I got some freaking sweet swords. 
uh, and axes and stuff. Uh, overall, it's it's my first run was good. I made it really far. Like your first goal is to write, light these three beacons, make it to the king's castle or whatever, because the gate doesn't open without lighting the, king's the beacons. Way. Yeah, the king's sway. And then you get there, and he's like, oh, you got to do something else for me. So, um, yeah, so, and then I did that something else for him, and then I died. And then the game restarted, and it's like, oh, you got to start a new character now. The cool thing about that is you get gems when you die, and then you can spend the gems on, like, oh, I want this gift when I start the game, or I want to change, like... I want to change the font in the OS. I want to change the colors in the OS. I want to make my cursor a skeleton hand. Um, all that sort of stuff. Just like my problem life. is when you start the game over, you're you're just doing all the same stuff again. You get the same emails and quests and everything. Um, some of them change up. I think like I didn't play enough on my second character to get a real sense of that, but at least the first couple quests were the same. And at that point, I had made it two and a half hours into whatever the run was on the previous one and i was just like i don't really want to do this again the, it's a different map um same like gotta go light the three beacons and make it back to the castle but it was just like i it wasn't fast and snappy and engaging enough for me to be like oh one more run one more run uh in this like not at all in the sense of like a vampire survivors or something like that but um not even in like a rogue sort of thing where you make it really far in rogue and you're like, oh, let me let me just do one more run for a little bit and quaff some potions. Um, it's just kind of like it's it's got that heart and I got really like two or three hours out of it, but I I kind of just don't want to play it again because it it should just be a full RPG. Like I don't I don't know why it has that roguelite element because it would just be more fun if I died and respawned. And they even put me back a little bit, or I got to save or something. Mm. That, that was just like my huge problem with it is, I, I like, are they using the roguelike to justify unlocking more things, um, with the gems and stuff? Uh, that was that was kind of just the thing I came across. But beautiful game. I got it for like four bucks on the Steam sale, so I'm not like pissed off. I paid for it or anything. Um, and I'm not mad at the game. Like, gorgeous game and fun. Uh, but I think that one element. I would have kept playing for a long time if my character hadn't died, which is the main point of it. Um, so I do recommend it if, if people want to check it out. It is fun. Uh, King's Way. King's Way. And I, I will King's say, it, it nails the OS stuff. Like, it starts up every time, does, like, a startup sound. The music's really good in their little music player. Um, every little detail in that is, is fun. Um, and, like, comparing weapons and, like, dragging stuff and selling stuff and talking to people it's it's a good time especially when you get like a new email and it also does the thing when anything updates the little windows at the bottom flash so you know like what to go look at um it really is it like falls into that aesthetic really really well um next up uh final fantasy 7 <clears throat> i've been playing this um i got to the ch 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 chocobo chocobo um chocobo chocobo uh, I never know how to say that. Chocobro. Uh, um, Chocobro. Uh, seller. The one who prefer proffers chocobos. Is that, is that the right word? Proffers? I believe you're using that word correctly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll take 300. Let me check. <laughs> uh, yeah. Google for me. I, is pro proffers gives not... Well, he acquires for you, right? That's what proffers mean. Proffer is hold, hold out to someone for acceptance or offer. He proffered his resignation. So, oh. yeah. He I don't know if you would normally use it in the terms of buying and selling, but Chocobo, I will allow it. Chocobos. Um, so, um, and then the guy said I didn't have enough money, and I said, bitch. Uh, so, I kind of stopped playing there. <laughs> you know, it's funny <laughs> to say I was so into the game last week because it was linear and it spit me out into the open world, and I was like, eh, do I really want to do this? But I did realize those cheats I mentioned last week that the game comes with, I can easily use, uh, not easily use, but I can use them for their intention, which is to go out into the open world, fight a bunch of things without worrying about dying. So you can just get money and XP and level up. Um, Wait, which was so a big I... I did not watch uh, last week's local chat because I don't watch this show. 
what Same. cheats are there in this game? <laughs> so uh, in the it's the Xbox version. I don't know like who did the remaster or anything like that. But there is a if you click in the left stick, it does three times speed, which is great. Mm -hmm. If you click in the right stick, it gives you full uh, action limit and health. And so you can just do limit breaks over and over again. Uh, and then if you click in both sticks at the same time, it turns off random encounters. Um, Ooh, okay. So it's super helpful uh, in a modern day sense where those like random encounters and fighting to level up really isn't a thing in games anymore. Like grinding, I should say, isn't really a thing in games gotcha. as much anymore. So it, it kind of mitigates that. Um, the, my only problem is I've accidentally clicked the right stick in like an actual <laughs> fight. And then I just feel like a, a like I'm not doing it like oops I just feel like a dick and I'm like oh, I wanted to like fight this guy and now like this little tarnish is on here that I I clicked the limit break button uh, and got all my health back and everything so that's kind of annoying um, but it is nice in the sense that like oh just run around the wild and can fight things without worrying about dying and you can just level up um, that is like what they describe it for. Um, obviously, probably not ever. Probably there's some nefarious fellows out there not quite using it to their st up to their standards. Um, but that's where I am in Final Fantasy VII. Um, I I don't know if I'm gonna keep playing it. I I do really like it. I'm at a moment of crisis in my life uh, right now with the no the the no AC in my apartment has really cleared my head and said. <laughs> Uh, you need video games to play. And the thing I have learned is I really want to be in the middle of a video game and I really don't want to start a video game. Mm -hmm. I keep trying to keep trying to like watch YouTube or a TV show and play a video game. And I, I keep not giving a video game time to learn it. Like, um, I have like, 15 the other problem is i have like 15 or 16 pc games i bought from the steam sale that i just can't play because they're not they're meant for mouse and keyboard so like steam deck's not a huge option for it and it's just like 90 degrees in this room and i do not want to sit at this computer and play a video game so that's the other problem and then on top of that a couple of those games are like hearts of iron which is like mm. i gotta sit down for like three hours and go through the tutorials <laughs> to learn hearts of iron i can't just sit down boot it up put a youtube video on and enjoy it like i want to be there but and i don't want to do the work to get there and i realize that's a stupid way of doing it um i need to just take afternoons to be like hey let's i gotta turn off the uh millennial thing of like do four things at once or two things at once not the zoomer thing of doing 15 things at once uh so I just, Hi, Karen. I are you leaving me? Have a, everyone say have a good day at work, Karen. Bye, Karen. Have a good day at work, Karen. I want the pasta. Thank you. Well, I made pasta for myself for dinner. From scratch? No. <laughs> was it it like was squiddy? the pasta came from a box. <laughs> yeah, you, from <laughs> scratch from the box. That's what he meant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, sorry, where was I? Um, yeah, I just want to be, like, in the middle of, of a game, and, um, I, I think I'm just letting that, uh, consume my soul, because I keep sitting on the couch and being like, what if I, what if I play the game while watching TV? Well, I can't, because I'm, I have to start any game I want to, want to be in playing right now. Yeah. Yeah, I, there are a couple games on my list, um, my, my, like library that I would like to play. Like I've never played Sekiro. I've had it for forever, but it's like, do I want to start that? Like for real? Like, do I really want to jump into that? Yeah, um, a game where shadows can die a... twice. <laughs> yes, I the legends it's are true. Wild. But the, and then there's other stuff on my my wish list that I haven't gotten. That's like on sale. Like Roller Drum. It's like fifteen dollars mm. right now. Mm. I was like, I feel like I could play like it like a couple hours of that. Um, well, then but, Game Pass has to come in and be like, oh, I'm fucking Game Pass. Here's fifty <laughs> games that you can play right now. And they're like, Oh, here's Thanks, Maquette. Bill. Here's Tektronic. Here's Crusader Kings Three. Here's Cassette yeah. Beast. Here's Deep Rock. Like, hold on, Phil Spencer. My mouth is full. Um, 
My plate is full. And my fields of grain. Um, so that's the other big issue. Um, I just like, I want to, and Kyle, you mentioned that. It's like, I would, I got 50,000 roguelikes on my computer that I just hoard like Smaug. And, or like <sighs> Daggerfall Unity. I want to jump in and play some Daggerfall. Am I going to do it? Absolutely The Hobbit not. had been written today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tolkien would have loved it. Um, yeah. so yeah, that's the main issue. Uh, there were some games like I gave a chance. I was going to talk about Dave the Diver, but Ian also played that. So I kind of want to talk about that with him. But the gist is I was like an hour into Dave the Diver and I wanted to return it, refund mm. it. And mm. then I got like three hours into it and I was like, no, this is pretty good. And then I'm four hours into it. And I said, nah, I should have returned it. So and now I'm stuck with Dave and his diving. Um, but I'll yeah, talk about that It's interesting, because I've seen a lot of really good reviews for it. it. It's fun and interesting. It's just I don't think it's for me. Sure. Um, I, I fa yeah, I found some stuff obtuse about it that I that ended up, like some of the controls and everything, that ended up feeling a little bit better. But uh, I wonder how it plays on PC. I've been playing it on the Steam Deck. But um, it, it has, I don't know if this is a proper complaint, it has too much story. Um, I it just like too much. Like I like between the cutscenes and everything, and like every mission, it's just like fifty people talking, and just like like bringing you up to stuff on everything, and you're just like, I once just wanted to fish and run a sushi restaurant, and now there's like undersea people, and I have to go into this new place. Like I just want to upgrade my diving and everything. Like like the the story. Like, what people say in about 15 text screens could probably condense down into, like, four could is more of what I mean. Like, I think I think they could have edited it down to make it more snappy. Because the game sure. is very snappy and witty, but the writing for some of that stuff doesn't feel that way. It feels a little bit laborious. And you're just like, why, why are we stretching this out? Like, all the... Like, when you unlock a new recipe, it does, like, a... like. In the moonlight, the like sushi chef's like sitting on a rock, and then he's like quickly cutting things, and like for all the different <laughs> things, there's like special videos, or like when one of the critics tastes a thing, he like gets hearts in his eyes and like dances around, and there's like quick cuts and everything, and it's cute and funny, and you're like, oh, that's that's great, and everything, and then the writing's just like, and you're like, no, make the writing snappy and fun, um. And it's, it's just not quite doing it for me. Maybe if I learned how to read, uh, it would be doing a little <laughs> bit better. But um, currently, uh, it's just not viable for me. Um, i got to work on heist, Hearts of Iron to learn how to read. Um, but yeah, I, I'll let Ian talk about it more next week. Because he'll either love it for some crazy reason, or he'll shit on it. Like normal Ian. Uh, I feel like I want to give it a chance. Maybe I'll do the the... the you know, one hour and 59 minute demo that Steam allows. Thank God. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just looking at it right now because I, I had only like had a cursory knowledge of everything. Um, I knew that it was like, it's not just a diving game. There's like other stuff. Um, but I kind of dig the art style. And like, yeah, it's, I don't know. It looks cool. It's a neat art style. Yeah, it, yeah. I don't have anything against the game. Like I, I saw like the farming in there. And there was some other stuff that looked really interesting, and I was into that. And all the gameplay portions of it are really fun. I just feel like mm. I can't, again, I can't sit back and relax and play it. Like, I feel like I really have to pay attention when those story beats hit. And if, mm. not that if I don't pay attention, I'm going to be completely lost, because you have objectives and everything. But I just feel like I'm not getting into it as much as I could be. Um, okay, <clears throat> is, it, is so. it mainly the story stuff? That like I don't it, like. The story's just not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's not even the story stuff. It's the presentation of the story that I'm not that into. Okay. Like I think it's interesting. There's like a giant squid and like underwater people, and and I think from what I gather, there's more of that, and I think that's cool and mm -hmm. neat. Um, but uh, yeah, the sushi running sushi place is cool. Um, I'm hoping there's some point where I just get to automate catching fish. Because now every dive, I'm like, oh, let me catch some fish too, so I can serve fish at my sushi place. But also, like, you get you get shark and stuff, and then it's like, like I got a couple sushi plates that are like two hundred dollars a plate, um, mm. that people will buy and everything. So 
it's it's fun. Like, don't get me wrong. It's it's a genuinely fun game. I just like have these weird reservations about it when I'm playing it, and I'm just like, am I really enjoying this? Um, like, well, I feel like I, I should be it. I just bought it on Steam, so good. I will refund if necessary. <laughs> I have refunded <clears throat> several games uh, that I have demoed over the past week. Um, both the Valkyria Chronicles one and four. I did not enjoy, and um, uh, uh, Tactics Ogre Reborn. I, Tactics Ogre Reborn mostly because the remastered art style is the gross pixel thing where they like round the edges of all the pixels, and gross. I absolutely Ew. hate that. So uh, oh, also, I really like didn't that. like the gameplay. Um, and then finally, sorry, I'm taking forever on my portion. Exo Primal. Um, Exo Primal is the game that hit for me this week. It's so freaking good. Um, you're just murdering dinosaurs in mech suits or mech. Yeah, I guess there are mech suits. Um, mm. It's super fun. The multiplayer is set up in a really cool way where um, the first portion of it is uh, you're going. It's war games. This uh, AI has taken over an island and has teleported all of these people uh, there to fight in war games he wants to perf make the perfect warriors i guess predators uh the perfect predator so you fight Adrian dinosaurs Brody's. predator <laughs> yeah Adrian, yeah i'm uh, uh uh i'm venom what's his face what's his name toby not Toby. i don't Mark. remember any of their names topher grace's oh, character topher grace. i'm topher, topher grace. grace yeah um <laughs> uh God, what a stupid ass movie! Um, There's a so samurai <laughs> fight in the in the weirdly yeah, but Japanese that's the best location. Part, I know, but it's um, just like, oh hey, this one specific location on this uh, alien planet, Kurosawa like yeah. had it, it was in charge of the production design. So. There's just a Kurosawa land uh, like <laughs> sign broken down. <laughs> I really um, liked his his filmography. There is a there is a samurai character in this game, but there I have to unlock them. There's a bunch of free characters, and there's like the battle pass characters that you can also unlock by playing the game. Um, so, anyways, the multiplayer you do like six or seven rounds of uh, clearing out objectives. So you move to one spot, kill this many pteranodons, this many velociraptors, this many big guys. And if you finish that first, he'll be like, you are completing objectives faster than the enemy team. Or if you're doing it slower, he'll say you're doing it slower. And then so you, you kind of like go as fast as you can through these different things. And the, the cool thing about that is like, it'll be like, hey, kill 60 Velociraptors and four uh, Pteranodons. And he'll keep spawning Velociraptors. And like people who are new to the game, you'll realize they're not seeing that. So they're just killing dinosaurs. And it's like, no kill the four pteranodons so we can finish this round and move on. Like, you don't have to kill everything on the screen, you just need to kill uh, that. And then there's, like, uh, defend the area where the more people inside the ring, it faster it goes up, which I, in a couple of matches, I just ping the ground there to tell people, because they always, always run over to where they're spawning. And I'm like, no, come defend the area. So anyways, you do multiple rounds of that, and then the final round, you can either do when you search for matchmaking, you can do PvP, PvE, or random. So the PvP one I've gotten is the Overwatch protect the the vehicle as it goes to its mm. its final destination. Both teams are doing that on the same map, opposite sides. So by the time you get to the middle, you can see the other team and shoot at them and kill them. And the one map uh, that I have played that on three or four times, I've always won because when you get to the end, the enemy team is bottlenecked in like this weird uh, archway that they have to come out of. So you just spam your bullets over there and you seem to always win, <laughs> uh, which seems like an oversight. I don't know. If, like I've never spawned on that side, so I don't know if they can come around a different way. And then the PVE version of that is it's the same thing as the previous round where you're doing the little missions but you're just doing three of those missions and they're a lot harder and you're just trying to see who can do those fast enough so when in the pve version when the final team finishes it changes the clock over to 15 seconds and if the other team can do finish their thing in 15 seconds everyone wins and the the uh the the AI is like you're all victorious, great job, you all move on, and then if you lose, the dinosaurs rip you apart, and it's disgusting. And then if you win, yeah. 
So I, I thought that was really interesting where like um, the way the multiplayer set up, because you're not, you're fighting against the AI and you're fighting against the other team, but not directly. You're just trying to compete faster than they are. And like, it kind of makes you forced to be like, hey, we need to do, we need to work together as a team. And you're not necessarily on voice chat or anything. And the other nice thing is you can change your suit out at any point in the mission to any of the other characters mm. it takes about maybe 10 15 seconds so if you're there and you die <clears throat> i've gotten a few times it says your team has no support so i'll like switch over to the witch doctor who's this like healer guy and heal everything um it, it's fun it's it's the the um story mode is also revealed through missions like as you finish missions you unlock these little data cubes and then you can go to another screen and watch the data and then when you get enough data cubes you unlock like this little bigger data point and then you can watch a cutscene in there i have skipped every single one of them uh because i really don't care i just want to fight the dinosaurs uh and then as you're playing characters you're unlocking different stuff each character has their own like little battle pass and then there's the bigger battle pass and you're unlocking skins and um new abilities for the characters like to add like like you get 40 percent more damage if you do this and that and all that sort of stuff um it's on game pass i highly recommend checking it out it's not going to blow your socks off or anything but it i was expecting an edf with dinosaurs and that is not what i got um i got uh like fun multiplayer that i genuinely wasn't expecting uh and then yeah the leveling's cool uh, and it seems I've like level nine or 10 now, which seems to be like, I seem to be leveling really fast and getting like a lot, like I've been able to buy skins and, and characters and stuff. And I'm like, I hope they don't patch this and make it harder because like right now it's like the, per like every other match I'm leveling up. So it seems to be getting kind of perfect. Um, and super fun. So Exo Primal, I highly recommend it's on game pass. Go check it out. Um, Jake, Jake. Jake, hmm. Jake. Oh, Exo Primal. I was going to put it on the game of the year list. So. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, good okay. thing it's on Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to add that right now while Jake talks about his uh, stuff. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, games to add to the game of the year list, I added this week Roto Force to the Goatee discussion. Um, I have been on a shoot 'em up kick for weeks now. And it providentially, this game got released this week. It's um, if you just go look at like a GIF of it, you'll get the idea. It's a shoot 'em up where you are a little character on the inside of some shape, a square, a circle, or whatever, and the screen you m can move around, and the screen will rotate, and enemies will keep spawning in. Um, and you shoot them and you kill them. Um, but you you have you know fewer evasive options because your movement is restricted to the shape that you're in. And you can like jump across, but mostly you're just like going around to avoid fire. Kind of a little bit like Tempest, I guess. Um, if that's a good uh, starting point, it's like if Tempest were Tempest is kind of a shoot 'em up. Um, yeah, but uh, I guess flat. like a yeah, it's like flat, flat tempest. Um, <laughs> it's really good. Limpest. I'm loving it, and that's why I put it on the goatee discussion. Um, any questions, or do I move on to the next one? <laughs> There's no. already too many games on the game of the year. Like. I saw people tweeting um, about it, and I was like, "What is this?" And then you were talking about Roto Roto Force, and I was like, "Jake's stupid game." And so, no, I'm kidding. And then I was like, oh, let me look it up before the, the uh, podcast. And then I saw it and I said, that's the game everyone's been tweeting about. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it looks Because really I remember neat. I saw like a GIF of it maybe like a year ago. Um, it, it was one of those games similar to Mixalumia where I saw like a GIF of it and then completely forgot about it until I was like, what was, what was the hey. game I was thinking about? I finally got over a million points in Mixalumia. Okay. So my high score, which I know is not a lot, but my high score is up to like eight point three million. Okay. Wow. You don't have to brag about it. Um. No, I I like that game a lot, and it's per, it's I played it on my trip out to California a lot on the airplane, and this kid 
who was uh, two seats over for me. I was in the window seat. It was two seats over for me. He kept he kept being like, <laughs> "What is that?" And you just turned your screen away. What, what are you playing? <laughs> what is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "You no. just flipped him off." <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what I, is this weird want, Tetris? Part of me wanted to be like, "Do you want to try it?" Because like, mm-hmm. clearly you're interested. But then I was like, "Ooh, no!" Someone I don't know. <laughs> Gross. Ooh, and no. he was like 12. So, <laughs> yeah, you should all play Mixalumi if you haven't. But Roto That's Force, goatee, goatee contender in my eyes. Um, then I've been playing another shoot 'em up, uh, Ikaruga, which I believe was suggested by Halucha in my first, uh, my first shmup stream. Um, that game's tough. <laughs> It's uh I found I was able to find it has been ported to the Switch, so I've been playing it on the Switch. Um, but it's the gimmick. Are you either of you familiar with Ikaruga? I'm I'm looking at screenshots right now. It looks I so played it last night. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Kyle, the gimmick is the enemies will only ever shoot at you with um black or white bullets. And you I'm gonna can look, I'm gonna look it up right now. You can flip your ship to be aligned with one bullet color or the other, which means you'll mm-hmm. absorb one bullet, but be uh, uh, you can be hit by the other. So it becomes this kind of puzzle-esque combat situation where you're having to like attack and then change your ship uh, uh, alignment to navigate a new field of bullets and then flip back and keep firing. Um, yeah, I've I have I've yet to beat the second stage, um, but uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I um was looking through games on my Steam Deck last night, and I was like, oh, Jake was talking about shmups. I wonder if I have Ikaruga on here. So I scrolled down to the where the GameCube discs go in, and I found it, and I was like, oh, uh, let me try this. And I was playing it, and I was exact same boat as you. I was like, I but in my case. I, there was no introduction or anything. I was like, I don't remember the controls to this video game at all. And I was like, through halfway through the first stage, uh, shooting things, and I was getting a decent way through, and I was like, how are you supposed to avoid all this stuff? And then I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. There's other buttons that make your ship do things. Mm-hmm. So... Um, yeah, it does just drop you into that first stage. There's no tutorial. Yeah, I was so confused. I was like, "Oh, this is weird." Like, why? Like, because I had played, I played it before, and I was like, "I don't remember it being this, this, this hard." Um, because I kept dying, and I was like, "What?" Um, it is, it is, it looks good though. It looks so good. It's a very yeah. pretty video game. Looks good, sounds good. Um, worth, yeah, but that's really purchase. all I've been. Huh? Worth a purchase. Uh, I mean, how do you feel about bullet hell shoot 'em ups? I think that's kind of. I I have so little experience with them. It's, Jake, I mean, you... sorry. Have, have you ever played Enter the Gungeon? I have played Enter the Gungeon. Okay. Yeah. Do you I, like that, I've... that type of game? I do like it. I think I think for whatever reason, my bullet hell sensibilities uh, trend towards. Um, those that have a flying machine protagonist, mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to uh, like Enter the Gungeon. I like Enter the Gungeon, but for whatever reason, I kept bouncing. Like for a long time, I just kept bouncing off of it, and I really had to like force myself to sit down with it and just kind of slog through it until I don't know. I Stockholm syndromed myself into liking it. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, Kyle, I'd say. Uh, I mean, if you're gonna for an entry level shoot 'em up, my pitch is uh, Steradin, uh, which I think is it's a more recent one, or maybe even Roto Force, um, both of which are more recent and have a lot of kind of quality of life improvements over um, some of the older shoot 'em ups, um, which are fun, but at this point kind of represent in my mind um, like game development curiosities where they're like far more interesting as like a like a archaeological relic to be like okay I can see how this came from that and then informed the design of x or y um but I don't think it's I don't think it's baby's first shmup it's pretty okay. it's pre- it's pretty brutal <laughs> well 
Um, I'm glad that you said that because. Uh, Did you just buy it? <laughs> I literally just bought it. Wow. I mean, if so you end up it's loving gonna it. It's going to be babies first. Yeah. Uh, would you like to unlock appendix menu? Yeah, sure. let's see so if you can get a new that. appendix when you're one burst from <laughs> having so much fun. I am gonna, I am gonna need one, <laughs> but yeah, that'd be great um, to get one of those. But Roto Force, I think, is only like eight bucks or twelve bucks on uh, Steam. Uh, no, it was sixteen. Oh, Roto Force, uh, I which I thought was on Switch. Um, it's not. I'm, I'm, I would be shocked if it doesn't end up on Switch at some point. Yeah. Oh, get ready to get shot. But, but yeah, that's what uh, I've been playing. If, if Roto Force is going to be on the Goatee listy, then I will have to buy it. And I've also, I I know you can play with mouse and keyboard, but I've been playing with a gamepad um, on Steam. Oh, it's only $7? Heck, I'll buy that right now. Yeah. I just, oh, so- I, I got my last paycheck from Rutgers, which was all my PTO, so I'm like, I've got money to <laughs> blow. Swimming in it? Yeah. Lucky money. Oh yeah. Um. Unt- until until two days from now, when I'm like, uh, I have to pay bills. It's only seven bucks. I might fun, buy that. Fun, um. Fun, fun, fun. My. Okay, I just um, got a force too. Oh shit! Sorry, you probably can all hear that. Um, I can hear that. <clears throat> well, let's just say let's hit the news quick because this coffee in its uh is it praised property? Quick? It has flown through me in a way that means I will be sprinting. And just well, then I want to do the final segment as well. Um, Jake will get. Actually, I did. Did someone move it back? Or was that last week I moved it? I've been moving them up so we can hit them. Um, <clears throat> yes, we can do your final section. I was just going to mention uh, this can't be confirmed because Jeff Keeley has not tweeted it yet. But um, Kyle has written here. Kyle, would you like to say what you've written here? Uh, yes. Uh, for all of those watching the stream hours from now, uh, noted video game enthusiast Tony Bennett has has died, has passed on. There is no extra life to his great reward. <laughs> he, he yes, um, he he uh, was with us for a, a good long while. Uh, I do want to mention he was featured in, I believe, a TMNT comic book at one point. Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett was what? Let me let me look this up. I just like to say he oh. did it his way. He did it uh, his way. Yes. So Which was Anthony Dominic Anthony Dominic Benedetto, known professionally as Tony Bennett, is an American singer and actor. In the IDW continuity of comics, a fictionalized version of him appears as a party guest of Toad Baron in Toad Baron's Ball Part Two. Toad Great. Baron invites Aloplex, Alopex and Angel Bridge to play an unreleased video game, Lords of Fighting Three, with him. So clearly he was a fan of video games, at least the fictionalized version of him. Crazy. So, Damn, he was 96. Dude was old. That's how old my grandpa is. Damn. Is your grandpa Tony Bennett? No. Oh my God. <laughs> this is how you found out your grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> what? I just want one of these episodes. It's just Kyle writes, Jake's grandfather did. <laughs> like, what? Jake's like, or like who, whoever's on the podcast, Ian, your family just died in a car crash. Oh my <laughs> the God. worst way to receive news uh, <laughs> other than Jeff Keeley. Uh, I, other than Jeff. I just heard from Jeff Keeley's Twitter that your entire family's <laughs> gone. <laughs> but they were also in a video game. <laughs> Yeah, no, I did. Point. I did just get a phone call from Cocoa Beach, Florida, but that's not. If the, my grandpa was in the hospital, they wouldn't take him there. That's too far. It's too far. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Jake, hit us with that wish list spotlight, my man. Well, no, I mean, I guess that means that Ian put it there, so I can drop something that oh, shit. Uh, that I've picked that you care about. Oh, it looked yeah. like an Ian game. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I hadn't clicked on it. This is. Uh, napalming villages in Vietnam. It is, of course, an Ian game. This so should I should I put a different game, game in there? Uh, I mean, well, I can talk about this, if, or you can talk. No, about if game. you didn't pick it, <laughs> I want to pick something else. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought about uh, stealing one of your games one week, <laughs> so you wouldn't be able to talk about it. Mm. Uh, talk about okay, your. So wait, are you talking about that, or am I, or no, somebody you, else talking about? I'll that? wait for Ian to talk about that. You can talk about your. Game. I put a link in. 
for a game for the wish list spotlight. Hey, Jake, wish list spotlight game. Did you put a game in this week? Why don't you talk about it? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, sub ROV colon underwater discoveries, um, to live out your Robert Ballard fantasy. Um, it's, uh, it looks like, I mean, it's in, er- it's in early access right now. Um, but, um, it's just like all UI based explore underwater, navigate little submarines around. I don't know. Looks real charming. Live your Stockton in, in... Rush dreams. I was just going to say in, in this news cycle, you're going to play a sub game. Mm. But you're uh, not in it. ROV, it's remote operated vehicle. So yeah, you're remotely operating you're... it with from within it. <laughs> so you're just. <laughs> You're just playing as Ocean Gate, the company. You're on, yeah. You're you're the one losing contact with the sub, <laughs> and then you have okay. to send out another sub to find it. <laughs> and then the Navy tells you days later, "Oh yeah, we definitely that, heard that we explosion already, we sounds. Knew, <laughs> we knew what happened <laughs> yeah. a why long they, time ago. Why didn't they just ask the fish? I don't know. This looks. I mean, it looks to me like a like a more a more technical version." Uh, maybe a more like a a less story driven version of did either of you play in other waters the first game from uh, uh, Citizen Sleeper Dev Jump Over the Age? No, I ref- I refuse to play any games that take place underwater. So, uh, well, it's in other waters is all UI based as well, where you're operating a like a, a a submersible craft on an alien planet and studying like a bunch of alien wildlife. Um, but it's got more of like a narrative thread that unfolds as it goes on. Um, but it's pretty minimal, and this looks like a more technical kind of uh, oh, this, presentation. This came out last year, That's it's early access, idea. baby. Wow! Until it gets a 1.0, I will consider slapping it on the wish list spotlight. Okay, spotlight this wish list. Yeah, that's <sighs> my pick. I love it. I love it. Me um, love me an underwater game. Kyle knows I forced him to watch the Keith David National Geographic. Uh, that was dock. that was delightful, though. The that Arbiter did an underwater dock. Jewels of the it's, Caribbean Sea. It's great. Narrated by Keith David. A lot of sperm talk, though. I was just going to say he mm. says sperm a lot. So <laughs> it's the one thing I remember, which wow. is just sperm talk. Fine. I could but. Keith David talk about sperm with me any day. <laughs> um, I be- You know, I've been meaning maybe we should do it because fuck Ian. Um, that Barrow Trauma game, I've been meaning to get a group of people together to play that. Um, my brother Barrow likes trauma? it. Barrow well, Trauma. I also want to play Iron Lung before the Markiplier movie comes out. Uh, we could play Iron Lung. I don't it's... know if that's been affected by either of the strikes. <laughs> Barrow Trauma is like a uh, side, side view. You're all running a sub together in this like underwater world oh, and you're okay, like okay. you have to like repair it and it can flood and it's like that there's that older version that looks like a jules verne drawing it's not that this is like aquatic a adventure dark. of the last human no it was something it was called something else i can't remember what it was um that was like a cartoony version this is like a doc doc version uh and like scary descent sort of thing so mm. Oh, <sighs> anyways, folks, that's going to be the show this week. I'm going to hit the hit the outro. Does anyone have anything they want to say before I get out of here? We didn't talk about Eli Roth's new. Yeah, well, mess. some of us have to get to work. I, just, I wanted to mention that we didn't talk about it as a good thing. Yeah, mm-hmm, it is but... a good thing. Craig Mason's Borderlands movie. Um, no, it's not his. No. Yeah, he, Listen, he, he, he texted me. Departed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you got it. I forgot. Your... Yeah, he texted me. He said, yeah. yo, Chernobyl, man. And then I said, yo, Borderlands? He said, <laughs> yo. <"It's fire." laughs> Rewind time. Rewind time. Um, <laughs> folks, thank you so much for being here. Jake, Terrio, Kyle, Bailey. We had a wonderful little stream this morning. Not stream. Pre-recorded. Uh, folks, this weekend, Jake will be here on Sunday at 2 p.m. with more shmups. He's gonna, Darius Gaiden and he's Darius gonna Burst. Sh- 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 shmup it up. Uh, it's going to be hot. It's going to be sexual. It will be raw. 
Uh, so tune into that. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and then Tuesday, I don't know what we're doing. Do we even have a schedule yet? There's going to be something I on Tuesday. I thought you were playing Exo Primal. I don't want. I'm playing Exo Primal on Tuesday, but... or I might move that because who knows what I'm thinking. Uh, you can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. Brings you to all those things. Go buy our merch, get our things, whatever. Uh, Kyle, thank you so much for being here. Jake, thank you for being here. Yeah. We'll see you all next week.